Uh, okay, so uh, numerical methods in engineering. So this is uh, topic number 13, uh, which is also the lecture number 13. Uh, that means uh, in week in this week 10, the topic is about the interpolation. So as I said that this topic of interpolation comes after the methods of the uh, linear regression using the method of least uh, squares. That is the topic of regression uh, using the method of least squares. So the difference between the regression and the interpolation is that uh, in, in regression, you have uh, uh, some points and then you fit the line to that points. But that fitting of that line to that points is not uh, exact fitting. Uh, there is uh, some error uh, to that. Whereas in the in the case of the interpolation, uh, we will uh, fit the line to the points uh, exactly, but with some limitations. Okay, and then we will find the uh, intermediate points, the value of the intermediate points. So that is uh, called as the interpolation. So in the uh, method of the least square, which was in the for topic of the previous case, there was some error. So that error has to be uh, minimized. So the, uh, that error is the sum of the uh, squares of the uh, residuals. Okay, some of the squares of the residuals have to be minimized. But in the interpolation, we will have some specific number of points, and then we will uh, fit the line exactly to those points. So someone has sent me some question on the chat. Uh, okay, I can ask the question later on. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so interpolation, I was talking about the interpolation. Um, uh, then, uh, so in the interpolation that as I have so told that it is the fitting of the points, but that is the, uh, that is called as the exact fitting, but that exact fitting have to be done with under some conditions. So uh, what are those conditions? The conditions are that if, for example, if you are fitting uh, a line, then we need uh, two points. If we are fit, fitting a second degree, a second order curve, then we need three points. Okay. So then we will only in those situations, we will fit two points for a line, uh, three points for a second order curve, and uh, uh, four points for a third order curve. Uh, so we will not have any more more point than that. If we will have more point than that, then that will be the uh, uh, that will not be the exact fitting. That will be the uh, fitting with the help of uh, the method of the sum of the uh, residuals, sum of the squares of the uh, sum of the uh, sum of the squares of the residuals. Okay. Uh, residuals. So in this case, uh, in the case of this interpolation, we are doing the exact fitting, but with some limited number of points. So if we have nth order polynomial, then we will fit n plus one points. It's, it will not be like n plus two, n plus three, and n, n plus many other points. N, nth order ordinal, uh, nth order, or, uh, nth order uh, polynomial will be fit with n plus one points. So the simplest of the cases with n is equal to uh, one. So first order polynomial, uh, which is first order polynomial is nothing but the uh, line. Okay, so that first order, for the first order polynomial, what we need is, we need is the uh, two points only. So this we already know that if we have two points, uh, then we can combine them together with points, okay? So if we have point one and point two, and then we can uh, combine them with the line. Okay, we can combine them with the line. If we have another point, then we can combine them with another line as well. So, okay. But if we have three points, so for example, three points, and then three points. So, uh, 
like these three points. So then we can combine them with the curve. Okay, okay. I cannot draw very well over here this curve, but these three points can be drawn uh, combined with the curve. So this will be the second order curve. So if the points are three, the curve will be second order. If the points are two, the curve will be the first order curve. If the points are four, the curve will be the uh, third uh, order curve. So normally this polynomial curve is represented by this equation. Okay. So f of x is equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x square plus a n x power four. So as the as we are increasing the curves, the power of x is also increasing. And then uh, with each value, uh, with each term of x, we are multiplying it uh, with their uh, coefficients. So a naught, a one, a two, and a n, etc. Okay. So uh, in this case, then of course, uh, as uh, in the case of the previous topic, we needed to find the coefficients a0, a1, a2, and a n, etc. And then we can find that function. And uh, then for the interpolation, for the interpolation, then we have to find the value uh, of that function at some unknown, uh, at some value of x, which is not previously given. So for example, if previously you are given uh, the values uh, like, uh, uh, so, for example, here previously you are given the values like one, two, three, okay, and and then you have some values of the function like zero point five, uh, one point six, and three is four point nine. Okay, so if it is 1.6, this is 4.9. Then you fit a curve. And then later on for the interpolation, maybe the problem will say that find the value at 2.5. These horizontal lines are coming uh, are coming in un unintentionally. I don't want to draw these horizontal lines. I'm using the mouse, but these horizontal lines are unintentionally coming, okay. So for example, if I want to draw 2.5 again, it has come. So at 2.5. Two point five. So if I want the value at 2.5, so from that relationship, which we will find, I can find, find the value at 2.5. So this is the problem of the interpolation. So in this problem of the interpolation, we have actually two methods. Uh, one is called as the uh, Newton polynomial method, and the other is called as the uh, Lagrange uh, polynomial methods. Uh, both methods are uh, mathematically equivalent with each other. So there is no difference between these methods. But the formula uh, for both methods are different, okay? The form of the uh, formula for the form of the equation is different. But mathematically, both equations, uh, both of the formulas are the same. Both will uh, produce the same results. The difference between these two, uh, the advantage in the Lagrange polynomial is that it is relatively easier to a program on uh, computers. So for, for the computer algorithms, it is relatively easy to, uh, it is relatively easy to uh, uh, program it on computer. Okay, that means on uh, MATLAB or Excel, etc. Okay. So the Newton polynomial and the Lagrange polynomial. So first then we will look at the Newton polynomial method and then we will look at the Lagrange polynomial method. So this is just the uh, explanation of what we have previously said. So for a first order polynomial, we need two points. For the second order polynomial, 
we need at least, uh, we need three points. And the third order polynomial, we need four points, okay? For the uh, establish uh, for the step for establishing the curve for the uh, interpolation. Okay, so first let's look at the uh, Newton's uh, method. So this method, the full name is Newton's divided difference interpolating polynomials. Okay, so Newton's in polynomials means Newton's divided difference interpolating polynomials. And the simplest of the case uh, for this is the linear interpolation. That means uh, we have two points and then we're joining these two points with the help of line. So this is the simplest form of the interpolation connecting two data points uh, with a, a straight line. And for these uh, uh, data points, uh, when we connect these two data points with the straight line, and then we can find the value of uh, uh, the value of f of x, uh, given the values of the f of x naught and uh, uh, f of uh, x uh, one, f of x one. That means if we are given two points x naught and x one, you can find an unknown point, the value of the function at f of x. So uh, this is the uh, slope of uh, one point, and then this is the slope of uh, at the other point along this line. So this we can see with the help of this uh, figure as well. So if we have one point which is called as uh, uh, x1 and another point which is called as x2, instead of, uh, yeah, I think the formulation over here previously, which is shown over here is for x0 and x1. So, but here we are showing it with x1 and x2. So. It is said that uh, we have uh, the problem of these uh, interpolation is such that we have point x1 and the value of uh, at that point fx1, this is known. We have another point x2 and the value of the function at that point fx2, this is also known. So based on these two values and using the linear interpolation, we want to find the value of the function at point x, okay? Uh, and then if it's, uh, it will be uh, F1 of X. So in the linear inter interpolation, so we will join these two known points with the help of a line, okay? And then this in this case, we will uh, produce uh, uh, triangles, okay? If we draw one horizontal line from this first known point, and we draw another horizontal line from the another known point, and then a vertical line from the other po known point, and a vertical line from the point which we want to find the values. So we will come up with these uh, similar triangles. So if uh, we, uh, if we uh, take these similar triangles, so then what we can see is that uh, this triangle, this yellow triangle is uh, similar to this uh, green triangle. So green triangle is uh, also includes this uh, yellow triangle as well. So, so this yellow triangle, this, uh, side is f f1 of x minus fx1 okay and then its base is x minus x1 so this is this is x and this is x1 this will be the length of the base and this uh, bigger triangle is fx2 minus uh, fx1 and its base is x2 minus x1 so these two are similar triangles so therefore their ratios are also uh, similar so, but, uh, but from this, uh, uh, from these ratios, from these equal ratios, uh, we want to find the value of F1, X, F1, X. But remember that this F1, F2, F3 over here, the meaning of this F1, uh, that means uh, this, uh, this one with this F is that uh, we are talking about the uh, first order polynomial over here. That means the line. If we will have uh, f2x over here, then we will be talking about the second order polynomial. So since we are talk, uh, we are deriving the formula for the first order polynomial, so we are using this uh, subscript as f1 of x. Otherwise, x1 and x, uh, these, uh, this f1x is not related with this x1, okay? So these x1 and x2 are just the uh, points, okay, over here. 
So if the points are, if the given points are x1 and x2, then uh, just uh, do some uh, cross multiplication. And then from this, uh, from some little bit of uh, algebra, we can find that f1 of x is equal to f of x1 and plus f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1 times x minus x1. So this is the formula for the uh, interpolation in this case. So that means we can interpolate the value between x1 and x2 at uh, uh, some value of x by using this formula. So uh, this formula is called as the Newton's uh, divided difference formula. So because uh, this uh, this term over here, fx2 minus fx1 over x2 minus x1. So this is a this is a divided difference interpolation term. So you can see that there's a difference term on in the numerator. There is a difference term in the uh, denominator, and then we are taking their division. So that's why we call it as a divided difference. So divided difference. So it includes the divided difference inter. Uh, uh, different difference terms, okay? So this is the divided difference formula for the first order uh, polynomial, okay? So in generally speaking, uh, the predicted value is equal to the constant value plus uh, this uh, slope times the distance. So uh, we have found out the slope. So this shows us the slope and then times the distance. So this is the generalized form. Uh, way of uh, saying this uh, formula. So in order to apply this formula, uh, let's say that uh, estimate the uh, natural logarithm of two uh, using the linear interpolation. So F, so first perform the uh, computation by interpolation between uh, log one is equal to zero and log six is equal to 1.791759. Then repeat the procedure, but use a smaller interval from log one to log four, 1.38694. So note that the true value of log two is 0 0.6931472. Okay, so this problem uh, states that using the uh, first order linear interpolation, find the value of the log two. So we have to find the value of the log two. That means the for the, val, uh, the value of x is uh, two. Uh, given that the value of uh, uh, x one is zero, so the value of x one is, sorry, uh, the value of x one is zero and the value of the function, uh, sorry, the value of x1 is one, okay? And the value of the function at x1 is zero. And the value of x2 is six, and the value of the function at x2 is 1.79, okay? So we can uh, apply this formula, okay? But we can apply this formula. Uh, that means uh, the previously, which we have derived over here to find the value of the of the function at uh, log two. So using this interpolation, we can find the value. So F1 of two, so that is the unknown value of X is equal to two, which is equal to the F of X1, zero. This is F of X2 minus F of X1 divided by X2 minus X1 times X minus X1, X minus X1. So in this case, we can see that uh, the answer is 0 0.3583519. So uh, this 0 0.35, this answer for, is uh, very much different from the uh, very much different from the real value. So by our calculator, if we find the value of the log two, is, which will be 0 0.69, but the answer which we have found is 0 0.35. Uh, so in, in this case, then the uh, true uh, percentage error is 48.3%. So if you see that, uh, if we take the difference 0.69 or minus 0.35 divided by 0.69 times 100, so this true error will be 48.3%. That means by this approach, 
we have found the interpolated value, which is 48.3% different from the uh, true value. So, but in this case, the uh, interval which we have took is from one to six. Uh, but uh, what if the interval is uh, from uh, one to four? That means if we decrease the interval, so for if we decrease the interval, then we can find another estimate of this value, uh, which is uh, again, we start from uh, x1, which is zero. x2 in this case is uh, four, but you see log of four is given as 1.38. And minus zero divided by four minus one, which is uh, x2 minus x1, and then x minus x1. So it is 0 0.46. So in this case, the value uh, has improved, but it still has an error of 33.3%. So, but we can see that now the uh, error has re reduced from 48.3% to 33.3%. So in this way, then we can very easily uh, say that if we decrease the interval for the uh, interpolation values, uh, then we can improve on the results. Okay, then we can improve on the results. So this is one lesson which we have learned from the interpolation. But in, of course, in this case of linear interpolation, uh, there are normally uh, large errors, especially in those cases where the function is not linear itself. So this can, here we can see that the log function is, is not a linear function. For a linear function, if we are applying the linear interpol, uh, for a nonlinear function, if you are applying the linear interpolation, then therefore the errors will be relatively large. So uh, this is how uh, you can see that the error is obtained. So if, for example, if we have uh, one, and the value of X1 is uh, here, uh, which is one, and the value of X2 is here, which is six, and then we find it's a, a linear uh, estimate, which is about uh, uh, the value at x is equal to two. So the true value is here. The true well, the difference between the true value and the estimated value will be this much bigger. But if you take a smaller interval over here, like this over from here, the difference between the true value and the estimated value will be smaller. So it will be so closer the interval, closer will be the uh, found the value which will be found in this case. So, and the lesser will be the uh, percentage true error. So that was the linear interpolation. Uh, one step more is that we can derive uh, from the we can derive the uh, second order uh, polynomial uh, e equation. That means the, we can say, uh, order, uh, we can derive the second order interpolation formula. So this is called as the uh, quadratic uh, interpolation. And uh, if three data points are available, the estimate is improved by introducing some uh, curvature into the line connecting the points. And in those situations, uh, the equation for f2 of x is represented by this. So b0 plus b1 times x minus x0 plus b2 times x minus x0, x minus x1. Uh, remember that this equation is uh, not in that form which we previously, uh, which we normally are looking for for the polynomial. So for example, in this case, this is the uh, right in the first slide of this uh, lesson. I have shown you the general uh, equation of the polynomial. Here we have the terms in terms of x and x square and x power. There is no x minus x1, x minus x2 over here. So, but here we have we are for the second order uh, polynomial. Uh, even for the first uh, order polynomial, the curve was uh, different. It was in the, in the form of x minus x naught, okay? Or x minus uh, uh, x1, okay? x minus x1 or x minus x naught, whatever the way it is. 
okay so the curves uh, the curves uh, that means for the interpolation the curve uh, which we found or the equation which we found they are in terms of the x minus x1 x minus x2 these type kinds of equations so therefore uh, the general form uh, of the second order uh, interpolation will be in this form instead of x we will start from x minus x0 that is x0 will be the first point and then we will take the second point uh, x1 okay and uh, like that okay and then and there will be x2 as well okay so uh, but uh, these points will be uh, having these coefficients b0 b1 b2 and like that so a simple procedure can be used to, to determine the values of the uh, coefficients so there is a, a little bit of algebra uh, involved over here uh, which, which i will not uh, go into the details uh, but by by using that algebra we will uh, find that if uh, for example if we take the value of x is equal to x not if we take the value of x is equal to x not that means because you know that uh, okay here we can just think that uh, these points uh, uh, x not x1 and uh, x2 okay uh, they all are on the curve okay they all are on the curve so that means if we take the value of x is equal to x not over here so in this case what you can see over here is that if we take x is equal to x not over here then this second and this third term they cancel out because x minus x not will be equal to x is equal to x not that then that means that makes it x minus x not is equal to 0 so this term will be 0 this term will be 0 so therefore in that situation uh, b not will be equal to uh, f of x not and if we take uh, x is equal to x1 so if we take x is equal to x1 over here and then this second term will be zero so then we can find the value of b1 which will be equal to fx1 minus fx0 over x minus x0 or if we take x is equal to uh, x2 so then we will uh, just put it these values and then uh, rearrange the terms so then we can find the value of b naught so little bit with little bit of algebra and then in putting these values into this equation uh, then we can find the values of b naught b1 and b2 okay so here we can see that there is a pattern okay there is a pattern between these uh, values so here you can see that the pattern is in the form of this uh, divided differences so this is the first divided difference and then this is the second divided difference okay so this is the difference between x1 and x0 okay and uh, this is the difference between uh, x2 and x1 and minus the difference between x1 and x0 minus the previous difference so this is the new difference minus the previous difference right so uh, the previous difference was uh, x minus x naught. So that means if, uh, if we change, if we change the sign from here, like from minus to plus, then it will be exactly that. Term. But if we take the sign of minus one, then it will be uh, x one minus x naught. Here it was x minus x naught. So in this way, then we take the uh, differences in a continuous manner. And then that will be the uh, difference between x naught and x uh, x two and x naught divided by x naught minus x two. So uh, you, by using this uh, uh, these differences, uh, then we can find the values of these coefficients b naught, b one, and b two. And then when these coefficients are put input into into these equations, and then, then we can simplify that equation, and that will give us the, the second order polynomial equation uh, which is also called as the uh, parabolic equation or the quadratic uh, equ uh, equation so 
in this case uh, now uh, if we input these values of b naught b1 and b2 into this first equation so then the uh, general equation for the second order becomes like this and then this general equation with the second order can be compared with the uh, taylor series uh, as well okay so let's look at uh, uh, with the help of this uh, example example 18.2 so uh, quadratic interpolation so a fit a second order polynomial to the three points used in example 18.1 so remember that in this example 18.1 we uh, tried to interpolate the value of uh, uh, log of 2 from the given values of uh, log of 1 and 6 or log uh, log of 1 and 4 so anyway so we have now uh, in this case three given values uh, log of 1 which is 0 log of 4 which is uh, this one 1.386 and log of uh, 6 we have 1.792 okay so we have three given values so from these three given values now uh, we can uh, perform the uh, uh, quadratic uh, interpolation okay if for example if we want to perform the linear interpolation then we can use either one four or one six or, or four six whatever way so for for one six we can find the we can interpolate the values between one and four for four six we can interpolate the values between four and six or for one six we can interpolate the values between one and six but anyway in this case uh, since we want a quadratic interpolation we need three points for the linear inter interpolation, we can use any combination of these uh, three points. That means, uh, uh, which will include two points uh, each in each um, in each combination. Anyway, but what we are doing now is the quadratic interpolation. So we have to use these three points. Okay. So if we apply the equation, then b naught will be equal to zero because b naught was, if you remember that, b naught was equal to uh, f of x1. Um, okay, don't be confused with this. Actually, uh, uh, there is some uh, uh, inconsistency between these formulas over here. In, uh, the, that in inconsistency is in terms of this, for example, uh, x1 is actually x0 and x2 is equal to is actually x1 and x2 is actually x1 and x3 is actually x2 over here so yeah so uh, therefore so b naught is equal to okay if, we, okay if i go to this uh, formula over here b naught is equal to fx naught okay b naught is equal to fx naught so in this case b naught is equal to fx naught which is equal to zero so b naught will be zero and what will be b1 so b1 will be equal to uh, x1 minus x0 divided by uh, yeah, that is fx0 fx1 minus fx0 uh, divided by x1 minus x0 so it will be 0 0.4620981 and whereas uh, b1 b1 will be equal to the further difference that means the difference between these two terms, the uh, difference between these two terms, okay, and then minus the difference of this one. So uh, then it is equal to 1.79 minus 1.38 over 6 minus 4 divided by minus 0.46. So this minus 0.46 is the uh, previous uh, difference which we have found it. So in this case, that is equal to 6 minus one because its value was six and then this was uh, from the first value that is one and that is equal to minus 0 0.05 so, so substituting these values into uh, equation 1.18.3 yields the quadratic uh, formula so the quadratic formula in this case now we can obtain like this so we can uh, substitute these values into these equations and uh, 
uh, we can now maybe simplify it or if you just want to input the values of two into this equation, then it will be 0 0.565844. So which represents a relative error of 18.46. 4%. So previously we are relative, we are getting the relative errors of uh, like 48%, 33%. But in this case, we got a relative error of 18.4%. So the relative error has increased by increasing the uh, second order uh, polynomial uh, by increasing, increasing it to second order polynomial. Okay, so in this case, what we get, what we have seen over here is that so this is one value, this is another value, and this is the third value. So, so from this, uh, we have uh, found the uh, curve, which is in the shown by the blue line. And then from the linear interpolation, we have found this value. From the quadratic interpolation, we have found this value. And then this, uh, this quadratic estimate is much closer to the uh, true value in this case. Okay. So uh, this uh, quadratic uh, interpolation, so general nth order interpolation polynomial is then, that means it is represented in this form f1. And that means if we want the nth order a polynomial instead of the second, third, fourth, so it will be fn of x that will be equal to then we will start from b1, then b2, into x minus x1, and then bn, it should be x minus x1, x minus x2, up to x minus xn minus one. Okay, since if it is two, then it is one less term. So it will be xn minus one. And in this way, we will have this b1 will be f of x1, b2 will be f of x2, b3 will be f of x3, x2 minus x1, like that. So, here in this case now we can find the uh, differences. So uh, this uh, B2 uh, will be uh, then given by this function of X2 and X1 and then that function of X2 and X1 will be equal to uh, Fxi minus Fxj uh, divided by Xi minus Xj, okay? And uh, similarly, if we have three, then we will have fxi minus fxj minus fxj minus fxk over xi minus xk. So in this way, we can use this uh, forward differences over here. So uh, this, these forward differences can be uh, shown in the recursive uh, form as well, in the form of the table. So suppose if we have uh, four values over here, uh, x1, x2, x3, and x4, and their corresponding uh, values for the uh, function for the dependent variables are fx1, fx2, fx3, fx4. Uh, then we will find the first difference, which will be fx2 over fx1, then fx3 over fx1, and fx4 over fx3. And then we will find the second, that will be the uh, their difference fx3 over fx1 okay and uh, and that will be uh, x2 x3 x3 x2 x1 and then x3 x4 x4 x3 x2 and then for the third order it will be x4 x3 x2 and x1 that will be the uh, third uh, order difference so if we take these finite differences, ultimately for the polynomials, so if, if, the, if this polynomial is say for like a, a fourth order polynomial, so at the third order, there will be a constant value. And then at the fourth order, it will be a, a zero over here. So these are the properties of the finite uh, differences. These are some, so which we can also see at some other point, maybe in the, a numerical uh, differentiation chapter. We will see this property as well. So as an exercise, let's see in this case, uh, for example, if I open uh, 
Microsoft Excel. Okay. If I take X, the values of X as uh, one, uh, four, and six. Okay, one, four, and six. And then just for the example, that is the log of X. Okay, so it is equal to log of this value. Okay. And then these are the actual values. Okay, so first finite difference. Okay, so first uh, uh, finite difference. Okay, FFT. Okay, so that will be equal to that is equal to the first finite difference will be equal to this value minus this value divided by uh, the corresponding x values. So x minus y. So in this way, we will formulate it. So this is the first finite difference. And then for the second one, it will be this one. So for example, over here, this minus this divided by this minus this. Okay, so then the second finite difference will be second finite difference. Okay, second finite difference uh, that will be equal to uh, in this case now that will be equal to uh, this value minus this value divided by. So in this case, now we will get go to the extreme value over here for the previous case. We will not take this four, we will take six. Okay. So we will take the six value minus this first value that is this one. And then it will give you give us minus 0 0.05. So this is how we obtain these values. For example, in this example, 18.2. Uh, here, yeah, so here we got these values. So the first finite difference was 0 0.4620981. So 0 0.4620981. So where was that? Yeah, this one. Okay, and then the sec we got the second finite difference. This one, yeah, minus point four zero zero five, and this uh, this value, although it is not given over here, so it, which is the same as uh, this value, the one point seven nine minus one point three nine, which will be the same as this value point two zero. Okay. So in this way, we can get these uh, differences and then we uh, get the coefficient. So what will be the coefficients? The coefficients will be, uh, this will be B naught, this will be B1, and then this will be uh, B2, okay? So B naught, B1, B2, okay. and then we can, input these coefficients into this uh, general equation, x minus uh, x naught into x minus x naught and x minus x one, okay? And then you can simplify this equation and then we can find the value of x is equal to two from this equation, so which is 0 0.565. So uh, this value, uh, in this case, so in the case of the linear interpolation, we found this error was 48.3% when we interpolated between uh, one and six. And uh, when we interpolated between one and four, the error was 33.3%. But in this case of uh, example 18.2, when we have, when we used all these four points, one, four, six, the error is now only 18.2. So it means that we are, when we are increasing the order of the interpolation, uh, the values are also uh, increasing. Uh, so the, uh, the order of interpolation, the 
uh, uh, the error is the error, the percentage to uh, error will uh, decrease by increasing the order of the uh, interpolation. Okay, so uh, with this thing in mind, uh, let's stop for today. Uh, do you have any questions?